with a combination of spatial pressure and luring. And we teach the stand from a sit, meaning your dog's in a sit, and we push into them and make them do what we call a kick out stand. So your dog's sitting, and as I shove into the dog with spatial pressure, the dog pops up and stands up. So their rear end pops up, so they don't walk forward into the stand. In the old days when we taught a stand, your dog was in a sit, and you took a piece of food, and you lured them forward into the stand. So they stepped forward and stood up to follow the lure. But the problem with that is, is the dogs take steps, so they've moved forward, and they are not counting how many steps they take. So what happens is, as you, the dog gets more motivated, or you get distance in, instead of just taking one step and standing up, they take two or three or four or five. And it's difficult then to tell them not to do that because they think they're doing the same thing they've been doing all along. From the dog's perspective, it's not like they're counting how many steps they take. They're just moving forward into a stand. And so what's the difference in their mind if they move forward six inches, one foot, a foot and a half, two feet? There's really no difference uh, from, their, from their perspective. And so creeping or moving forward in that type of stand uh, creates problems for us, especially for a competition dog, right? Now, most pet dog people aren't going to even teach their dog to stand, right? It's a behavior that very few people that are raising a, uh, a pet dog teach their dog. It's not an essential behavior by any stretch of the imagination. But for our purposes in competition, uh, your dogs have to be able to sit down and stand, and there's going to be exercises that require, in almost every discipline, there's exercises that require that your dog be able to do this. So when we teach it, we teach it from a sit. So your dog learns how to sit, we get the dog to sit, we reward the sit, and then we'll push into them to make them pop up and stand up, and we'll capture our stand. So stand from a sit. We're also going to teach down, and we teach down from a stand. Right? So always teach down first with your dog in a stand. Don't teach your dog to down from a sit to start with. Right? And the reason for this is, lots of people, again, we used to teach our dogs to down from the sit all the time. The dog would sit, and you would lure the dog down and forward, and they would just kind of flop forward like that. So their butt would stay where it is, and they'd flop down like that. The problem with that is, also, that the dog's shoulder comes forward when they do that. So if you imagine, this is the dog's back, my hand's the dog's back, like this, and they're sitting on the floor, and this is their front legs, because they're in a sit, when they drop down, their shoulder, the point where their front legs and meets, is about six inches or a foot further forward than it was. And they, if they're staying in place, they should go straight down. And in order to do that, if your dog's in a sit, they actually literally have to slide their butt backwards. So they have to do this kind of motion when they lay down from a sit. And they have to shuffle backwards. And so if I teach my dog to down from a sit first and make them flop forward like that, Later on, two things happen. One, they come forward when you ask them to down. And the second thing that happens is when you're doing moving downs, like if you're walking with your dog and you tell them to down, well, there's out of motion exercises or common exercises in competition where your dog's healing and you would say down and they're drop. What they have a tendency to do is sit and then lay down because they learn it like in two actions. They've learned the down from a sit, so when you try to get them to down from a stand, they want to sit first. And so we always teach the down initially with the dog in a stand. So the dog's standing. We push into them a little bit and drop them down. Dog standing, we push into them a little bit of spatial pressure to keep them from coming forward, and then drop them down. And that makes them down nice, they fold straight down. And then later, once the dog is fluent in both the stand from the sit, kick out, kick out, kick out, kick out, and the down from the stand, drop, 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 <laughs> we mash those two together, and we create the down from the sit. And the down from the sit should look like, here's the dog sitting, it should go shup, and slide back. So if my dog's sitting and I ask it to down, it does this, sh slides back and downs, right? So to me, that's the, uh, what we call the dog trainer's secret handshake, right? So if your dog downs like that from a sit, that means you're at least thinking about dog training. Your dog does not accidentally do that. Lots of people capture certain types of behaviors accidentally. Their dog just offered it. You say, how'd you teach your dog to down? I don't know, he just laid down and I did this and I gave him a piece of food. It was all good, right? And so you, lots of people capture certain types of behaviors and they didn't put any special effort in. You will not capture a down from a sit like that without working at it. And, it, and you have to work to maintain it. Dogs just don't move that way naturally. And so if you see somebody doing that, you know, they're, 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 putting in, they're putting in some effort at least, right? Now, of course, if you were doing a pet dog, none of that would matter. It wouldn't matter if your dog came forward six inches when it laid down. 
right? It wouldn't matter if your dog was standing and you told it to down and it sat and then laid down. You don't care. But for our purposes, we're going to give you competition style criteria to train to. That way, if you choose to go on and mess with competition, whether it's rally or AKC obedience or any of the other sports, you will have correct foundation. And it's much easier to create correct foundation from the ground up than to go back and try to change it after the dog's doing it. Once the dog's doing it the wrong way, going back and fixing it is a lot harder than training it right in the first place. And then the other thing is, it's just useful for us as dog trainers to set criteria and then train to those criteria. So whatever they are, again, you wanna make sure that we have a relatively clear picture in our head of what we would like it to look like and that we train to that criteria. Again, lots of people, I say, how do you teach your dog to lay, what do you want your down to look like? And they're like, I don't know, I want my dog on the ground, right? Well, that's not a clear criteria. How did they get there? How did they move their body? Did they flop over? Did they go like this? Did they lay down walking forward? Did they move backwards and lay down? What do they do, right? Because from a dog's perspective, physically, those are all different things. And so it's really important in our head, we go, okay, this is what it should look like. And then I can work towards that. And then later, when the dog offers variations that aren't correct, I can say, hey, that's not right, do it this way. And they go, oh yeah, you're right. But if I've allowed a lot of variation in my behaviors and then I tried to hold the dog accountable, the dog goes, I'm not really sure. I've done a whole bunch of different things here. Which one is right, which one is wrong? And so then if I tell them they're wrong, I create either confusion or stress potentially as we go along, right? And so we wanna be really clear about this. And so for our purposes, it's not any harder necessarily to teach correct mechanics you just have to pay attention to it.